Good day and welcome to today's live lesson. Today we're going to be looking at comprehension skills. This is very, very important because you're going to be doing comprehensions per se um, in your progression tests, which are sometimes part of your assignment and also, of course, in your F1 exam at the end of the year. So you need to do to, to know what you're doing. Um, usually the progression tests and the exam are all about one hour and 10 minutes, which is, according to my bad mathematics, about 80 minutes. So even if you spend 30 minutes on your comprehension and grammar, then you've got another 50 minutes to plan and write the essay. That's also part of the progression test and exam. Okay, you know I've got a horrible thing about throwing marks away, and you should be able to do your comprehension itself in probably about 15 minutes, and then you can spend another 15 perhaps doing some of the um, more grammar type questions. And the grammar can include all sorts of things, like even a, a summary, um, clauses, you need to know what these things are, punctuation, changing verb tenses from one tense to another, perhaps asking you about synonyms, maybe there's something about um, formal and informal writing or letters, and of course, figures of speech. They're always going to ask you, give an example of, or find something in the passage, similes, metaphors, onomatopoeia, alliteration, all these things that, of course, you make sure you know. Okay. Right, let's look at the document and see what we can share with you today about comprehension skills. Right then. Here we go. Comprehension skills. What do you need to know? First of all, reading the text. You might think that's quite simple, but it's not really as it seems. This is what you're going to be doing if you're reading a text. Okay. In order to read any text, your brain has to process literal words. In other words, the exact meaning of each word that you're reading. And it also has to take in the relationship between all the words in a sentence. It also has to contain with the context behind the words. Okay, understanding the setting of the characters. And then how language, the language used, the types of adjectives and adverbs, types of verbs, and the vocabulary. This can influence emotion and inference, the meaning behind the text, the thing they don't tell you. Remember, if you infer something, you need some facts, and then you think of your previous knowledge of that fact to try and work out, just like a detective, what it's all about. And then once your brain has done all that, it still has to make the whole passage comprehensible so you can understand it. Oh dear. Some people just on the web chat, having problems with electricity and low batteries and whatnot. But don't worry, learn what you can. If you want the information, let me know on the web chat. I'll send it to you. Reading comprehension involves using many different mental activities at the same time, which is what we just looked at. Otherwise, we won't be able to understand the meaning of a text. So while you're reading, you are trying to decide the meaning of the text. You're wondering about the purpose of the text. And then you're associating any prior knowledge you may have about words or the actual events in a text. You're also trying to identify the meaning of that text. You're visualizing the setting and the characters. If you do that, it's a really big help to you, particularly when it comes to answering the questions. And then finally, you're trying to understand what's actually going on. 
So your brain is in a huge big turmoil. It's not just sitting vacant like it sometimes does. So what we're saying is essentially you should be thinking while you read rather than continuing to read if you have a query. You must stop reading when you're feeling confused or you have a question about the text or a special thought. What does that mean about something you've just read? When that happens, you must stop what you're doing and then reread the sentence you've just read so that you can improve your understanding of what you've just read. Give your brain time to process and put it all together. You don't become a speed reader when you're doing a progression test or the exam. Okay, so that shows you all the stuff that your brain is doing just to try to understand. All the cogs are turning in there trying to understand what is going on. Okay. Right, you get your comprehension and you see the passage you have to read. Maybe there's one passage, maybe there's two. So start out. The first thing you do is try to read that passage for understanding. And this gives you a general picture of what it's all about. As we previously said, try to visualize while you're reading because this will help you focus and concentrate. Your brain is full of hundreds of other things, problems, anxiety, but no, you need to focus and concentrate. If you visualize while you're reading, try and imagine what things look like, what people look like, etc. It's going to help you a lot to focus. Use your pen, I hope that's not your pen, pencil or highlighter and make annotations in the text. Writing in the margin or highlighting phrases and vocabulary. Important ones or ones that are puzzling you. Okay, so if you annotate a text, that's all you're doing. You're using your pen, pencil or highlighter and picking out things that you're thinking might be important on your reading. Then what do you do? You ask yourself the following questions. Who are the characters? Are there any characters? Maybe it's a descriptive passage and there are no characters. So you can either take note of that, take cognizance of that or not. Sometimes it's important who is the writer, the author of the piece, because maybe it's taken from one of your literature books for all you know. You never know. And that might help because you know the certain themes that certain authors write about a lot. Okay, so these little clues will help you. Then think what's the main idea? What's it all about? And what is significant in the passage? Okay, that's when you get your highlighters out, and some people love them. And some people can color code things. They can color code important points in, say, yellow, words they don't understand in red, that sort of thing. So continue to ask yourself questions. Where is this whole thing, Titi, taking place? What's the setting? When does it take place? Is that important? The time, the date, the era? Is it this century, last century, the previous century? because then this is where your experience comes to play. You know what people are perhaps wearing in, that, in those days. They talk in a certain way when they come from a couple of hundred years ago. Then maybe even why was the passage written? What was the writer's intention? If it's from a passage from a book, you don't need to worry about that question. But if it's other some, some type of nonfiction, then you think about that. So these are important points to think about as you are reading. Then, before you start anything, you should read through the questions. Okay? Read through the questions, because sometimes that also gives you hints. Yeah, you'll be surprised, because some people even read the questions before they read the text. You know, they get their comprehension that, oh, I'll just read the questions first. 
that might concentrate my mind on the questions. Then they go back to the passage. But sometimes that might make you miss a few things that could be important to understanding and meaning. So be careful with that. So when you read through the press questions, keep the passage in mind at all times. And this gives you clues which will lead to the correct answers. Okay, we want the correct answers so you can get some marks. Um, now, sometimes, now take note of the following points. Root words and affixes. Remember we were talking about prefixes and suffixes in the Q&A? Okay, in general they are both known as affixes. Okay, that can help you understand the word. Look at contrast. Recognize how certain words might be compared or contrasted in the sentence for better understanding. It's all about understanding. Logic. You need to read the rest of the sentence to understand an unknown word in context. We also talked about that in our Q&A. Context, prefixes, suffixes, how these can affect the context. And in order to find the meaning of a word, we discovered if you read the following sentence or the one after that, you're probably going to get the meaning because the writer has repeated himself, but in a different way, um, using a paraphrase perhaps, or using synonyms. Then finally, we can look at grammar. What's the function of the word in the sentence? Is it a noun, a verb, an adjective? Uh, an adverb. These are the sort of things that will help you understand. Right, so you've looked at words, vocabulary, context, we've read the questions, and now you must read the passage again. You can't read it too many times because if you just think you can skim through that passage, uh, you are sadly mistaken. That's when, when you're not going to get marks for your sentences. Because some of the passages may look simple, but they're actually quite complicated. So don't be fooled by that. Right, so now you know what you've been asked, so you know what to look for. Highlight the main idea. If there's paragraphs with your highlighter, pencil or pen, or underline it, whatever your normal habit is. Because generally, the first sentence of a paragraph is often the key sentence the main sentence, the topic sentence. As you know from your own writing, you should have that topic sentence, explains everything in a short, sharp way, and the rest of a paragraph should back that up, give evidence, etc. And now, perhaps words and ideas that were confusing or difficult may now become clearer in your mind, so you gain a better understanding thereafter. Answering the questions. Now, you might think this is a, a silly thing to look at, but some people just take a quick glance at it and start answering. They might be totally off the point. So take your time because each question will have a question word. Highlight that word so you remember what you have to answer. Then you don't go wandering off at another angle. Each question contains a key word or idea as well. There's, so there's a question word, and then there's a key word or idea of what they're looking for. So highlight that. You're on the right track now. Um, then try to remember if you read that fact, word, or idea at the beginning, middle, or end of the passage. Then it's easier for you to find the exact thing you're looking for. Try not to copy directly from the text, but refer to it. Then you'll avoid spelling mistakes. Or you might put the fact wrong even, which I just saw the other day, because people were going too fast. You don't need to rush. You've got plenty of time to write out your answers. In the exam, if you make a spelling mistake, you could possibly get no marks just because of wrong spelling, even if the answer is correct. That's why you must not be careless with spelling. 
Um, in the grammar section, they might ask for a synonym, a word that's similar, or an antonym, the opposite. And you must replace this with the same part of speech. A noun with a noun, an adverb with an adverb, or it will be wrong. That's why, as we said earlier on, what is the function of that word in a sentence? Noun, verb, etc. Okay, so that helps you with looking at questions. Is it why, where, when, what, how? That's a question word. The keyword or idea, what they're asking about. That's what you're looking at to answer. Okay. Whoa, this is you guys talking and thinking. Hi there, somebody's a little bit late, but don't worry, better late than never. <laughs> right, how do we answer the questions? It's important to follow the instructions exactly. That's why you have to read it once, twice, or even more. Does the answer need a full sentence? Does it just need a word, or does it need a phrase? It will often say, look for a phrase in the passage that tells you X, Y, Z, and you have to find that phrase. Now, some people think they're being smart by putting in the whole sentence, and, oh, the teacher will find the phrase in this sentence. If you write a sentence and they've asked for a phrase, zero is what you're getting, okay? All of the instructions exactly, okay? Right, try to never start your sentence with a conjunction. If you just write because such and such, that just shows you're a lazy writer. You can't be bothered writing the first part of the sentence. Okay, so try never to start a sentence with a conjunction. Because, and, but, so. Okay, not a good sign. Now, when you're answering, you should also look at the marks because that tells you how many points are required. If you're getting five marks and you write one fact, you're certainly not going to get five marks for one, one silly little phrase, sentence, or otherwise. So you look and see that to check. Do you have to write more? Is there a larger space that they've left for you on the paper? Now, of course, there are no half marks. With Cambridge. So in the progression tests and in your F1, you cannot get a half. So it's either all right, then you would get one mark, or it's all wrong. No halves. Okay. All right, here's another thing. If you have to do any numbering, like 3A or 3B, it's usually on the answer question, but just make sure that it corresponds correctly. Okay. That's what you must do if it's 3A, you're writing 3A answer, 3B, because if you put the answer for 3B into 3A, you're not getting that mark. Be careful. Now, here's one. When quoting from the text, maybe they ask you for a word or what quote in the text shows you how someone behaved, what can you imply or infer from that, you should use single inverted commas. That takes less time than doing double inverted commas, okay? Here's your single inverted commas there. Right, if you're asked to describe the tone of the passage, make sure you use adjectives to describe it, because adjectives describe nouns. So the tone could be humorous, it could be gloomy, it could be sad, exciting, whatever. So you use an adjective to describe it. <laughs> If you have time when you finish answering, try to edit your work. Check spelling or language errors to avoid losing marks because you'll lose them in the actual exam itself. Maybe the progression mark tests aren't marked so strictly, but if you get into the habit of it doing it once, keep, you know, try not to do it ever again. And finally, Try to read, read, write as clearly and neatly as possible. Illegible writing that cannot be read will lose marks. Another thing that will lose marks is if you try to write in, say, a blue pen or some other pen where the writing is so faded, 
once you photocopy it, then you will also lose marks. You should always try to write in a black pen that's quite thick. We don't want little woozy writing in pencil that you just cannot read from the photocopy. So do that. Oh gosh, someone else has come in late. Not to worry, as we said, better late than never. Right, and finally, the last thing I think we have to look at are the types of questions that you can get in a comprehension. First of all, you've got your factual or contextual questions. Who, what, where and when. And these are usually about the storyline and the answers are always found in the passage. Then you get your interpretive, interpretative, sorry, or inference type questions. These test your ability beyond the story for you to think a bit outside the box. You may have to infer an idea because it's not openly stated in the passage. And this is really about the writer's attitude, style and tone, where he has provided some clues, but you have to pick up what those clues are. Okay. Another type of question could just be the language usage, which answers the question, how? Vocabulary, grammar, punctuation, figurative language. Make sure you read up on those things, or I can do another lesson on them at some point. You can let me know what you're having a problem with, and we look at it. Otherwise, we go suffer in silence and keep on making the same mistake again and again. Now, you might get a style question. Um, is the style of the passage, is it a narrative? Is it in the first person? Is it in the third person? Is it descriptive, formal, informal, simple, scientific, humorous? And, and is a passage written in the first, second, or third person? Okay, so that would be about style. Now, the tone of the passage. In other ways, does the passage convey the writer's feelings, moods, and attitudes? The tone could be angry, apologetic, arrogant, condescending, gloomy, humorous, neutral, personal. I think that should be personal. Impersonal, persuasive, sarcastic superficial or sympathetic. These emotions can be stated, but generally they're implied or inferred by how the writer is describing things. So again, you've got to be the detective and try and work out the tone, which is really about emotions. Okay. Right. What's the writer's objective or intention? Why did he write that? You have to decide what the objective is and decide whether the writer achieved it or not. Maybe the purpose of the text is to amuse, condemn, criticize, educate, entertain, explain, inform, persuade, or ridicule something or other. If it's a narrative text from a story, it's really written to entertain the reader. Okay, other types of tests, texts might be to persuade you about something or inform you about something. Okay, so you need to think about that. Mm -hmm. Then, we're doing well here with our time today. You may be asked for your opinion about something. Um, you're asked to give a response about something you've read in the passage. Maybe you have to assess a character or a situation, or you may be asked to comment on the writer's style, intention, thoughts, and feelings. You must be able to, okay, so they ask you about that, your opinion, but if you've got an opinion that's come from the text, what must be, you be able to do? You must be able to substantiate or prove that opinion with examples from the text. 
So in other words, you're going to find a quotation, and it might be a sentence, it might be a word, it might be a phrase, just whatever you can to prove or substantiate what you've written. Again, if you're using a quotation, just use single inverted commas. Okay, that's a bit easier because sometimes things can get a bit messy when you start using double ones, double inverted commas, because some people can confuse that for speech. Okay, so, and there we have it. These are the comprehension skills, the types of questions you could be asked. Um, how do you answer the question? Follow instructions exactly. That's the worst one with people just glancing at a question and assuming what they have to write. Um, there's again how and where to answer the question properly. Reading the passage once, twice, three times, whatever it takes to get things into your head. Trying to work out vocabulary meanings if required. Um, and of course, what your poor little brain is doing every time you're trying to do a comprehension. Okay, yes, our time is almost up. Okay, let me stop share. Okay, if there's anything you didn't understand there or anything you want clarification on, send me a message and I can send you information. Okay, so don't be shy to do that and you'll learn more and you'll be able to keep it for future use. Okay. All right, everyone. Thanks very much for joining us and hopefully I'll see you next time.